Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. As you can see, the newly appointed master supervisor has shown up and made himself comfortable on the couch and has demanded an increase in work output because that's what supervisors always do. Uh, they want you to do more with less. So that's what we're doing here today. I'm uh, multitasking. In one room, I'm turning my spheres on the lathe, making my concave floor plates. And over here, I've got the bandsaw working on uh, cutting out what will be the nuts that go on the bottom of the of the anchors. So let me get you turned around here where you can see the Johnson in action. And I'll show you the big Johnson at work. Okay, so what I'm doing here is cutting seven inches of steel at a time. Um, so that gives me seven plates for each one cut. Gives me plenty of time to fool around in there on the lathe while this thing's in here cutting because it takes a while for it to cut through uh, seven inches by three inches of steel. So I guess 21 square inches of surface area of steel. That's a pretty good cut. But uh, the Johnson can do it. It just takes it a while. So I've already got my length set. So, let me fire this up. I'll let this cut. And I'll get back to work so the supervisor's happy. Well, that's that, seven blocks at a time. So I'll feed this out and we'll cut seven more. So as the old great wise Tom Lipton would say, rinse and repeat. Okay, so on Bailey's efficiency kick, I'm still trying to knock these plates out as fast as I can. So what I'm doing is I'm triple stacking them in the four jaw chuck. Uh, I think that's the fastest way for me to do this. I don't have a 
good vice for the drill press yet to set up and do on it it might would maybe be close to the as fast but I still don't think it would because I'd probably only be doing one plate at a time versus doing three plates at a time on here. I don't know how much it saves, but it's a little bit versus set up since these blocks were cut in clusters. I've got several of them that are the same length, so I match them up all the same. They're out of the same saw cut group and chuck those up in here. And the four jaw, it holds them nice and centered, plenty good enough to. Uh, Put the hole through they can float around in the bottom of the anchor so if it's off a couple thousands it doesn't really matter uh pretty much all i do is get a hole drilled through here 49 60 force and then take his 7 8 tap and tap them that's the gambling part on this i don't have a tap holder so i'm just holding them in the chuck and 7 8 taps are reasonably difficult to twist by hand so i just try and tighten them down in the chuck and hopefully screw them through and not break it off because this lady certainly wouldn't care about breaking it off and wouldn't even hesitate. So, let me get this fired up and I'll show you going through some of these. And may I give you an idea, if you run into something like this, how you can batch parts and do multiples at one time. So I'm getting down to the end and getting kind of brave. So let's try and do one that would make Bailey proud and see how fast we can knock these three out. So. Sure, 
come all the way through. Yep. Good deal. That's it. Three seven eighths by one inch tapped holes and drilled in these blocks. So that's time on that. Hopefully that'll meet spec because that's about as fast as I can do it. Well, I know you want to see that full bore tapping one more time. So this 225 RPM 7 8 tap should be fine. Man, I do get pretty gun shy doing that, especially after this is tapped like 60 inches of steel in one shot. So, don't know how long it stays sharp for, although it's doing pretty good, it feels like. So, keeping the tap lubed up with the uh, fluid tap definitely extends its life, I'd say. I'm sure I couldn't do that without it. Well, don't tell Bailey I'm sitting down on the job, but. I've got my 44 nuts done to go on my anchors, and I've got my 44 uh, plates done to sit on top of them. I actually did 46 because I've got two extra thick ones. Just worked out what was left of the material, so I went ahead and made some in case I need an extra space somewhere. Uh, I can play around with where they sit in order to get it to where I don't run out of adjustment. I can always grind them down too or turn them in the lathe to make them fit to level the machine up if I have to. But uh, I'm happy that I was able to get through this without snapping any taps or doing any destruction. Uh, there's quite a few pieces to make. I guess, well, there's 44 inches of steel tapped here, one inch thick plates. So it was a good project for the day. Uh oh, looks like I've been caught. So the inspector has come to certify the job. What do you think, Bailey? Does it look good? You gonna give it the wag? Yeah, he's giving it the wag. Can't see it, but he's doing it anyway. About to finish the last pour for your doghouse. Yeah. Got a spindle proving bar in there. You like that, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So, from Byron and Bailey. Look. From Brian and Bailey, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later. He's tired. He's not even the one who did the work.